If you're serious about protecting your tech, then this bag may be for you. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Danny and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the Moose 25 liter everyday backpack. And this is a bag that seems to be very focused on keeping your tech safe from the elements, bumps and drops and anything else that you might run into on your day to day. The bag is a pretty modern and sleek aesthetic that reminds me of bags from companies such as Peak Design, Nomadic and Air. So it's a minimal techie vibe that's going to work well in a variety of environments. It's going to be professional enough to take into an office, but also work well for exploring a city and traveling. As far as the materials, the bag feels very solidly built. The exterior fabric is a carbonated nylon that has a polyurethane coating, so it feels like it's going to hold up well to rougher usage while providing plenty of weather resistance. It is a little on the heavier side, even when the bag is empty, but that makes sense given the rugged materials and the padding that's provided. And you also have some really nice aqua guarded YKK zippers all throughout. Continuing along the outside of the bag, I was happy to see that you do have an external water bottle pocket that offers a pretty decent amount of space. I was able to fit the same 20 ounce water bottle that I use in a lot of my daily bag videos and it fit in there pretty comfortably. I was also able to squeeze in a 26 ounce Yeti Rambler due to the elasticity that's provided here. It was able to adapt to the volume of the bottle and then because of that elasticity, it also pulls the compartment close to the bag when it's not in use. Above the compartment, you have a compression strap that has a G-hook, so it's very easy to release it and maybe hold a taller item in the water bottle pocket or just hold something separate, uh, such as a jacket or a tripod. And then on the bottom of the bag, you have similar compression straps, again with the G-hooks and some Hypalon attachment points, which are gonna be great for holding a larger tripod, a yoga mat, so I really like the versatility provided by these. They also have some elastic loops to help keep the straps looking a little bit neater. On the front of the bag, you have an additional attachment point that's gonna be good for holding something like a hero clip, or it can even work as a makeshift handle if you're picking the bag up off the ground. And then on the other side of the bag, you have a handle that's gonna allow you to carry this like a briefcase if you don't wanna wear it on your back or if you're going into a meeting. This has a pretty comfortable material. It's kind of padded, feels a little bit like the seatbelt like material that we've seen on some of Air's bags, so really high quality. At the top of the bag, you have a simpler handle that's gonna be thin, it's not super padded, but it may work well for hanging the bag up when it's not in use. The last thing I'll mention while we're on the outside is that the bag does have a pretty wide base and it holds its shape when it's a little bit emptier, so it can stand up well on its own pretty consistently. You can see that it tends to lean a little bit, so if more of the weight is towards the front, it might tip over, but glad to see that you can kind of place it down and grab what you need when you're working somewhere. And then moving into the capacity, the bag comes in at about 25 liters, which is a really versatile size in my opinion. I was able to hold all the items that I normally like to carry with me, and I still had some leftover space without the bag feeling overwhelmingly big. And it's not the slimmest of these sort of textile bags that I've used as the volume is fixed. You can't really compress it down when it's emptier, but it never felt so overwhelmingly bulky that it was uncomfortable to use on public transit for walking around a city or for carrying on to domestic and international airlines. Taking a look at the harness system, so far the bag has been pretty comfortable to wear. I like how the straps have been implemented here. There's plenty of padding that's really comfortable right out of the box. On the inside, there's no sort of breathable mesh to help prevent moisture from building up, but the straps do have a really nice width to help prevent the bag from digging into your shoulders when it's a little bit more packed out. And then on the strap, you also have a few attachment points where you can maybe hang your sunglasses or you know attach a light or something like that. And you also have an adjustable and removable sternum strap to help distribute the weight. And this has a magnetic buckle to make it very easy to get this on and off. Moving into the back paneling, this has also been really comfortable. There's plenty of padding distributed all throughout the back. And I like that this does have a more breathable mesh fabric on it, as well as ridges on the padding that's gonna provide a nice amount of ventilation. And you also have some elevation here in the middle that's gonna provide you with some nice airflow while you're walking around throughout the day. While we're on the back paneling, another feature I wanna call out is that there's a luggage passer that's gonna allow you to rest this on a suitcase while traveling to save some weight on your back. Jumping into the organizational options, there are a ton of pockets distributed all throughout the bag. Starting off at the top, you have a quick access pocket that's actually on the lid that covers the main area of the bag, which can make it a little bit tricky to take full advantage of the space that's provided here. 
Regardless, this is one of the compartments that I use most regularly throughout the day since it is at the top and I can easily reach down and grab items such as my AirPods or my sunglasses. This is typically where I will store that. Even with a case, they fit in there. And then on the inside of this compartment, you have a nice fleece lining that's gonna help prevent against scratching for anything more delicate that you wanna store here. On the same side of the bag that has the carrying handle, you have another zipper quick access pocket. This one is gonna be a little bit slimmer and on the inside it actually has a magnetic keychain loop. So this is gonna be a good spot to store your keys or something like a multi-tool, anything that you wanna grab a little bit more quickly. I like that it has this magnetic buckle that allows you to fully detach it to just make it a little bit easier to use and then place back into your bag. And with the space that's provided here, you could also store something like a portable battery or maybe even tuck in your phone if you're not gonna be storing your keys in that compartment. And then on the back of the bag, you have an additional zippered pocket that's a little more hidden, so it's gonna be a good spot for sensitive items such as some spare cash, maybe your passport, or in my case, what I currently have here is the Air card holder, which is one of the wallets that I like to travel with. The next area we're gonna be taking a look at is the dedicated laptop compartment. This has a very well protected AquaGuard zipper. You also have the ability to lock the zipper for this compartment to give you a little bit more peace of mind. I really like the zipper pulls that are included here so you can get a nice grip. The compartment doesn't open fully flat. It is a top loading compartment. And this is one of the areas where the bag really excels as far as offering protection for your tank. It leverages aerofoam to make sure that your devices are well protected, particularly if you happen to drop your bag. So you have dedicated tablet and laptop sleeves here. They both offer a decent amount of padding. They are secured with this Velcro strap to prevent the items from slipping out. And the tablet sleeve is gonna be able to hold up to a full size 10 or 11 inch tablet. Currently what I have in here is my iPad mini, which fit in there very easily. You can see that it has you know, a pretty thick sleeve here and a nice soft lining on the inside. Same for the laptop sleeve, very similar thickness and a soft inner lining to help prevent against scratching. This will be able to hold up to a 15 or 16 inch laptop. Currently what I have in here is my 13 inch MacBook Air. You can see there's some leftover space and the compartment is well protected on the bottom. There is a piece of foam that actually keeps your device from making contact with the bottom of the ground. So it kind of has the false bottom and the extra protection from that foam. So when you place your bag down, you definitely don't feel like your device is making any contact with the ground, which is always great to see. And so pulling my device out, now with the compartment empty, you can get a better look at the inside and the sleeve does come up a decent amount. So if you happen to have a thicker device, it should be able to fit in there pretty comfortably. And again, with the padding that's provided on the sleeve, on the bottom and the soft lining that's on the inside, it really feels like my device is gonna be very well protected while I'm running around throughout the day. Moving into the main compartment, you have a pretty interesting setup here. On the front, you have a magnetic Fidlock buckle and I absolutely love these buckles. They are always really fun to use. It's a very satisfying sort of fidgety buckle that works well. It secures very quickly and easily and you have some adjustability with the strap here so you can give yourself a little bit of extra room at the top. I'm a little bit torn on this feature with this bag as this top lid doesn't really feel like it's that necessary. It does give you an extra compartment and I guess it provides some additional protection to the zipper in the main area. If you have your zippers at the top, it kind of covers it. You have some security but it can tend to feel extraneous. So just something that, you know, is maybe more of a personal preference. It's different from other top loaders where the top flap actually kind of closes the bag up and it's vital to open it. Here, it just feels like something where if you didn't have this, you would still have kind of the normal zipper to keep the bag protected. So something to keep in mind, but regardless, it does add a nice aesthetic to the bag, some extra pocketing, so your mileage may vary. As far as the zipper for the main compartment, you have a zipper that goes all the way down on both sides, so you can really kind of open this up clamshell style. But one of the things that I like about this style of zipper is that you don't have to open it all the way to access the main area. If the zipper is set up so that you can pull it down on one side, you can swing the bag around, grab what you need, and then zip it right back up. So a nice amount of versatility there, but when you really wanna see everything that's in the compartment, you do have that ability to bring both of them down and have full visibility into the space that's offered here. Again, 25 liters of capacity, so I was able to hold quite a bit, and because it's kind of a bucket style layout, it worked well for some of the bulkier items that I use in the modular way that I like to organize my stuff. Diving into what I currently have here at the top, I have my packable rain jacket, 
and then I have my Beat Studio wireless headphones. I also have my DJI Mavic Mini with its hard shell case. And then I have the Evergoods Civic Access pouch, which has a lot of my tech and, you know, remote work essentials. Now with the compartment empty, you can get a better look at the inside. So lots of organization in the compartment. Before jumping into that, I did just want to call out that this can work for minimal travel with the space that's offered here. I was able to toss in a packing cube, my dop kit, an extra pair of shoes, and then use this for weekend travel. And so turning back to the internal organization, you have a slip pocket on the side here that's elastic. It's going to be great for something a little bit taller, maybe a larger portable battery, some charging cables for your laptop. I didn't really use that because of the pouches that I was carrying. So it just kind of stays out of the way when it's not in use. And then on the back of the compartment, you have a pretty deep, larger slip pocket. This seemed like it was meant to be used with a water bottle. However, there is an external water bottle pocket, so it could be used for maybe a tripod or some GoPro accessories, a gimbal. So nice amount of space here and flexibility with the material that's provided. On the other side of the main compartment, you have a pretty small elastic pocket that seemed like it was perfectly sized for an air tag to just give your bag a little bit of that security. And then moving into the back, you have a larger zippered compartment, which also has a mesh elastic material. I like the use of these mesh materials because they sort of mold around the items that are in the compartment. It gives you a little bit more flexibility with what you can store. So in this pocket, I currently just have a headlamp that I've been carrying around a lot as of late. And I also have the Tom Bin Ghost Wool pouch with a lot of my smaller accessories that I don't want floating around loosely. And then above that, you have an additional zippered pocket that's gonna be great for sort of tech and other daily essentials that you need to grab. It has this zipper on the back that opens up pretty wide, so you have a lot of volume here, even for something a little bit larger. Again, a good spot for maybe your laptop charger. In my case, what I currently have here is a lightning cable to charge my phone, and then I also have a deck of cards and the manicure set that I always have on me. And then on the other side of the compartment, more pockets here, lots of variety. Uh, at the top, you have some pretty small elastic slip pockets it's good. that seem to be perfectly sized for something like a pair of AirPods, or I had actually placed an AirTag in there at one point, and I also have this smaller flashlight that I've been using as of late. And then below that, you have another zippered compartment that doesn't have the see-through mesh, so it's a little bit more hidden. And in this area, I currently have my Apple Magic Mouse, and I also have the Peak Design mobile tripod that's great for using with my phone. And then below that, you have a slightly larger mesh zippered pocket where I currently have my Band-Aids and ointments, and I also have an additional portable battery to keep my phone charged. So a really nice variety of pockets in this main area and throughout the rest of the bag. I like the amount of space that's provided and the focus on keeping your stuff protected. So just a really sleek, versatile bag. And if you're looking for something that's gonna be weather resistant, comfortable, and just work well in a lot of different environments, and this is gonna be a solid option to check out. And so to wrap up, it's been a great experience testing out the Moose 25 liter everyday backpack over the past couple of weeks. You can currently purchase this on the company site for about $250, which is definitely a bit of an investment. You are getting, however, a very well-built bag with a nice feature set, and it's gonna compare well to some of the other similar bags that are in this price range. And so as I was testing this out, the first bag this made me think of is the Peter McKinnon and Nomadic camera pack that we featured pretty recently. To me, the bags have a pretty similar aesthetic, you know, strong focus on tech protection, very weather resistant, good harness system, uh, separate and well padded laptop compartment. The organizational layouts on the two are pretty different as that one is much simpler. It doesn't have as much built in organization. The philosophy there is that you can use their ecosystem of modular sort of cubes and accessories to lay out the bag the way that you want. So depending on your preferences, one or the other may appeal a little bit more to you. That bag is definitely another that's in the premium price range. I think it's closer to $300, but it's very well built. It's got a really interesting layout. And if you're a fan of Peter McKinnon and Nomadic, or you just need a really kind of versatile camera bag, then that's gonna be a great option to take a look at. The next bag this made me think of is the Peak Design Everyday Backpack and the Everyday Zip Backpack. Peak Design always has some really interesting modern designs, very innovative as far as the organizational layouts that they provide. You can access the bag from pretty much any direction. Very good for organizing your camera gear. They have a variety of configurable dividers on the inside, good pocket layout, high quality materials. To me, that bag doesn't feel like it's gonna be quite as weather resistant as this bag here. I also have never been a big fan of Peak Design's harness systems. However, 
The rest of the feature sets on the bag and the build quality are really solid. And if you're looking for a bag that's got this type of a vibe, but that's gonna be a little bit more focused on camera protection and organization, that's gonna be a good option to take a look at. Another bag this made me think of is the Boundary Supply Errant Pack, which has been one of my favorite tech and EDC bags of the past couple of years. Very rugged bag, lots of weather resistance. It has a really comfortable harness system. Like this one, it has kind of a top loading mechanism and it can also open clamshell style, good laptop protection. It has a lot of pockets, sometimes a little bit overwhelming, kind of like this bag in a way, but you know, a lot of variety in how you can organize your stuff. Boundary Supply also has a really modular ecosystem of accessories that allow you to configure the bag with camera cubes and pouches. So a really interesting layout and just sort of aesthetic. It just feels a little more kind of rugged and outdoorsy. So if you're looking for something like this, that's gonna offer a lot of protection for your stuff, but with just a little bit of a different aesthetic, and that's gonna be a great option to check out. And then the last option that I'll mention here is the Air City Pack Pro, which is a really awesome tech and everyday bag. Very comfortable harness system, really solid build quality and weather resistance, lots of organization for all of your tech and essentials. I like that it has a more traditional clamshell style opening, very well padded and suspended laptop compartment. I really like the aesthetic of that bag as well. Just really versatile, it's gonna work well in a nicer environment. Uh, without being super sleek or techy. So, you know, just a very well-rounded bag, comes in at a pretty similar price range. And if you're looking for something durable, comfortable, that you can take pretty much anywhere, then that's gonna be a fantastic option to consider. With that being said, the Moose Everyday Backpack holds up pretty well against all those options. And if you're looking for a versatile, weather resistant and spacious bag that's gonna offer tons of organization and protection for your tech, then this is gonna be a solid option to check out. And I'm definitely curious to hear what you all think of the Moose Everyday Backpack and how it compares to some of the other popular tech and EDC bags that are currently on the market. And if there's any similar options that you think I should check out, as always, please let me know in the comments. And I wanna thank the company for sending the bag for me to test out and to you guys for watching and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos and we'll see you in the next one.